Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, you know, I thought I would sit down and film a little quick um, reveal and give an update on uh, the Louis Vuitton Nice BB that I spoke about in one of my other videos. But I thought I'll probably do like a bit of a chatty video as well because otherwise it's really only like two items in this, um, in this video. So it's not exactly gonna be a haul, it's just gonna be a bit of a chit chat. Um, but yeah, before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love all things luxury, um, then I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bells can be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every weekend and sometimes I'll have a midweek upload as well. So Nice BB, I got it back. Now this is the replacement one. So if you watch the video, it's the title that says Louis Vuitton fail unboxing. Um, I bought a Louis Vuitton Nice BB and it had like cuts on the canvas on the base. It was horrible. Like, I don't know how it clearly didn't happen once it left the factory, like where it's made. I reckon it's happened afterwards. So maybe someone else got it and they did something to it by mistake and then slipped it back and returned it. Maybe something happened at the store, who knows? But I feel like, you know, when you're packing up luxury goods to send to a customer, you shouldn't give them a look over. And I'm not meaning like to give them a look over with like a fine tooth comb and pick up on the tiniest of things, you know, cause some things like aren't really a big deal. They don't affect the quality and they're just like, you know, yeah, some people are pretty picky. Uh, I'm definitely not super picky, uh, but I feel like with that, how come that wasn't picked up? There was an obvious crack in like cuts in the canvas. It was so obvious and there was a few of it. Um, and uh, as we know with canvas, if it's um, cut, cracked, anything, it is death to the canvas and Louis Vuitton will not service it. So if I had accepted that and kept it, there's like, I would pretty much be shooting myself in the foot. And they did send me out a new one and I got to check it over. They sent me pictures and everything like that and it was fine. All my makeup is in here. So I'll show you what's inside. So it's super duper full. Um, and the reason I went with the Nice Vanity is because I do have the toiletry, which I have done a reveal on this channel as well. Got these uh, Cogendo Spa Cleansing Water Wipes. Now these are actually the best wipes that you can use for your face for removing makeup. They feel so soft. They feel like you're literally washing your face. Like, you know how, like, you know how makeup wipes feel like they're sometimes like dragging your skin and they don't feel nice. This actually feels like a gentle cleanse on your face. It is really good. These Cogendo ones are worth the splurge. I love these. I will link these down below because I feel like for anyone who uses makeup wipes, give these a go and they, they will change your life. Like seriously, they will just change your whole makeup wipes um, uh, experience. So yeah, I'll link these down below in the description box. I have um, the number five Lou purse perfume that came with the Factory 5 collection. Then I've got the number five uh, deodorant. So that one, that was, this was a limited edition, edition one, but it just wasn't a part of the Factory 5. Um, my Hydra Beauty lip balm, the number five uh, body cream, which I also revealed when I did my factory five video. I didn't reveal this the purse perfume because I actually got that later on And then I have like some pore pore strips for my nose So I actually buy these like on eBay because they're cheaper to buy them on eBay the pore strips Otherwise they cost a lot of money when you buy them from like Bior or something like that So um, I'll link these down below because you can save a lot of money just getting them like on eBay I mean they come from China, but they work fine, you know, like they're just something that you put on your nose to rip out your disgusting pores. So that is what is in my toiletry 26. Love this piece. This is going to be amazing for travel. Um, I do plan to probably use this as like a clutch and a handbag. Back to the Nice BB. Now, oh, you know what I forgot to show you? Because I showed you in my last video my insert. So that's me using my insert inside, using like that for the organizing. Um, it is kind of just filled up with like everything. I haven't, I've used some of the pockets, but kind of felt that I got more uh, space from just chucking it all in into the main compartment, but that's because all my stuff was like boxes. It was all those um, sublimage boxes. But with my Nice BB, I do have my own insert as well. So I spoke about this before in that toiletry reveal video. I had someone coming for me before saying, why are you selling other inserts when you only you only recommend seven root parodies? Nah, nah, nah. But at the end of the day, not everyone wants to spend you know, 400 euro on an insert. Some people just want to spend like 60 bucks on an insert and call it a day. That is their personal choice. I will never ever claim that felt inserts are the best for your bag. I will always say Seven Root Paradise inserts are the best for your bags, always. But their range is limited. They pretty much only do Hermes at the moment. 
but there are still people that own Hermes bags that want to get felt inserts because they don't want to spend 400 euro on, on an insert. And that's fair enough. I understand, you know, people have limitations, even though you, you know, I see it as, well, you're spending that much on luxury. You really should look after it. And if the best is available, you should get the best. That's my opinion. But also some people will be like, well, it's just something that I'm going inside my bag and I'd rather just not spend so much money on, on an insert because I want to put more money towards a handbag again. People have different priorities and different mindsets, and I completely respect that. I am not the kind of YouTuber that will just push product down your throat and say that this is what it is, call it a day, you just have to take, you just have to do what I say. I'm not that kind of person. I will always paint a bigger picture and I'll always uh, talk from different perspectives. So yeah, I have felt inserts. I stock felt inserts in my accessory store. I will link them down below, but it is your choice what you, you know, there are lots of companies that do other felt inserts. You can go ahead and buy from whoever you want to buy from. You can buy from me, buy from them, whatever. It's your personal choice. For me, I'm happy with my felt inserts <laughs> and I feel that like they do a really good job. So this is my niece BB packed to the absolute shit house with um, so much makeup so much that it's kind of like, why do I have so much? And this is not even, this is not even a quarter of my makeup collection. Like how much makeup I have and is boxed up into containers and in my, still in my drawers, a serious problem. <laughs> I, I feel like when, like, I mean, before I was doing luxury blogging, I used to do, I've always like done makeup stuff. I used to do makeup for people just as a side hobby, that sort of thing. Um, but I was kind of temporarily like makeup blogging um, for a short period of time. But then I kind of stopped because I was like, shit, the makeup game is insane. Like it is like extremely competitive and it took so long to film videos doing makeup. Um, and then you might only get like 200 views. And I was like, what's the point? Like I've just... The, the process with editing and stuff like that, I'm like, what's the point? You know, like makeup is way too competitive. And I was like, you know what? I love luxury. So, you know, and I want to talk to people. I want to interact with people and mingle. Um, perhaps it's better that I just talk about my other hobby and obsession, which is luxury. And that's how I ended up doing my luxury channel. And I ended up switching from being a makeup blogger to a luxury blogger. So, but yeah, that's how I started off. I was first originally a makeup blogger. I don't know if you want me to show you what's inside. I showed you what was in my toiletry. I'll go through a few pieces and that way you can kind of get an idea of like the insert. I'll show you like an image on the screen of my felt insert as well. Um, but yeah, back to my makeup. So I've got like this Ofra highlighter. Ofra make some bomb ass highlighters. Like they are just really, really good. They're so strong and pigmented. They are like absolutely blinding. You, a little goes a long way with, with these highlighters. So um, anything I'm showing you, I'll just link it down below because I'm not really going to do it any justice, unfortunately, just quickly discussing them. Um, Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks, the absolute best as well. I love his liquid lipsticks. He does the best liquid lipsticks. Um, his eyeshadows are really good too. I just find his eyeshadow palettes are bulky. That's the only downfall is I find them bulky. Um, what else have I got? Uh, Mac lipstick. This is, uh, that one was mannequin, but I'll link it down below anyway. Um, Mac Huggable Lip Color. This is in the shade Touche, and that's a nude as well. I'm definitely like a nude lipstick person. Um, this is kind of like a balm though. This is not really like, it's more like a nourishing balm, so that's what I like about it. Um, what else have I got in here? Oh, this is like a ride or die product, the Mac Strobe Cream. You use this underneath your foundation and it gives you a nice kind of dewy look glow. It's really hydrating, but yeah, this is like an absolute cult product, but you can also use it as well as like a highlighter too, like for cream highlighting. Chiwamura eyelash curler. This is great if you have small eyes, especially if you have Asian eyes, their eyelash curlers are the best because of the way that they're kind of curved. They're just perfect for those kind of smaller eyelids. Um, yeah, heaps of products. Um, I'm trying to just show you a little bit of piece, like a little bits of pieces that I love, but I love all my makeup. That's why I just have so many of it. Um, oh, Natasha Denona, clear lip gloss. People are always looking for like clear lip gloss. Natasha Denona does like the, some of the best makeup products. She is a world renowned makeup artist. So clear lip gloss. I actually have as well her eyeshadow palette too, which is down below in here. And I love the size of her eyeshadow palettes because they're so super duper compact. 
Um, like this style of one is really compact. So yeah, I find it great for traveling because that way you're not having to take a big massive eyeshadow palette. And there's still a multitude of looks that you can get from this. Like you could do a, just a normal neutral look. You could do a smoky eye with the green. Um, you know, like there's just a lot of options. You could just do a full on like terracotta kind of orangey brown sort of fall look. So yeah, love her eyeshadow palettes because I don't want to mess this up too much by getting li little bits and pieces out. Uh, lip scrub. So this is the ColourPop Lippy Scrub. This is like a ride or die sort of product to exfoliate your lips before you go ahead and put lipstick on, it's especially with liquid lipsticks. So I always use this before I put a lipstick on. The other ride or die product that I have, and gosh, this is probably gonna mess, mess up my makeup bag spewing. But I wanna show you this because this is such a cult product like that all people that know makeup and are like makeup lovers and passionate about makeup will always say that this is such a highly recommended product. And this is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. It is actually a bronzer. Uh, yeah, it's a, bron a cream bronzer, but it lasts an absolute lifetime. Like seriously, I have had this for years. And um, even though it's probably recommended to chuck it out, it still smells really good. Um, and there are a lot of makeup bloggers as well that have had their Soleil de Tan de Chanel for many years and still using it. Um, it is recommended to just give it a wipe down with a tissue every now and then. Even though it's a cream bronzer, it is super easy to work with and it, it, it's like, a, it dries down super quickly. Um, you can use a makeup sponge, you can use like a synthetic brush, whatever. But honestly, if you just, if you don't want to invest in like Chanel makeup products, I would say that this is a product that you just really should have. And you'll thank me for it later because it really is a cult product for a reason. It's the absolute best, best bronzer. Oh, the other thing I want to show you is the absolute best concealer that you could ever own. And that is the Tarte Shape Tape. Like this is the bomb, bomb concealer. This is again, another cult favorite for everyone for a very good reason, because it is so pigmented. Uh, it covers all imperfections, dark circles, like everything. It just, it covers them amazingly, but it sets down pretty quick as well. Um, but yeah, it, um, inside here, I've got my brushes as well. Um, I packed away, like these are my ultimate favorite brushes, my Japanese brushes. These are the best ones to pack because they actually clean really easy. You pretty much just dust them off on a tissue because no product like stains the, the brush. It just like, it's just magical. Like Japanese Brushes are the absolute best in terms of brushes and they don't tug at your fine lines or wrinkles or anything like that because they're so ridiculously soft. I've got a variety of brushes here that are all made in Japan. I've got Wayne Goss, uh, Chiku Hodo as well. Um, a few of these are Chiku Hodo. One of them is Suku and the other one here, I think that's Koyodo. Yeah, Koyodo. So I've got a variety of Japanese brands. Um, Wayne Goss is, is a UK makeup artist, but he gets his brushes made in Japan because he knows that Japan makes the absolute best makeup brushes. Um, but yeah, variety of brands. I'll link them down below as well. If you are looking for the best makeup brushes that you can use. So that is some of the products that are inside my niece BB. In this box here is from Chanel. Opening this up. So I ordered this during lockdown and got it shipped out to me. And it's not something that I really thought that I would ever get. Like, cause I kind of am pretty like, usually have a bit of a threshold when it comes to like what I would spend on this kind of item. But I decided, you know what? I'm gonna pull the trigger because I kept thinking about them. And um, I have a friend, a very dear friend who lives near me, who also has like, you know, this kind of item and she seems to enjoy them. So I thought, you know what? Oh, cool. She put me in, put inside a little catalog. Okay. It's only a little catalog though. But um, yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pull the trigger and I'm going to get them because I had been thinking about them for a while now, even though it's kind of like usually a price point I don't usually spend on for this kind of item. But I did it this time around and I'm sure that I'm going to get lots of use out of them. So let me just open this up. Oops, there goes my camellia as always. If you're familiar with Chanel, you might know what this is because of the box shape. Whereas this is the first time I've ever bought this kind of item from them. So I don't even know how it's usually typically packaged, but I'm assuming this, you know, is pretty status quo. Um, all right, so I got, oh, there's, what's this? Booklet? Yeah? Well, it comes with a lot of stuff and a cleaning wipe, okay. All right, so, oh, look at this. How nice is that? 
It's a really nice case. I like that. So you, you obviously know what this is, right? Like given the case, duh. Um, I got the Chanel sunglasses that are super popular and it's these ones. Oh, wow. So I've never tried these on before, so I hope that they're actually going to suit me. Um, now as well, the price on these were $860. So that's the most I've ever spent on designer sunglasses. And I usually don't, like I have uh, Gucci sunglasses, which I paid like about $350 for or something like that um, with prescription lenses in. Actually, I spent about $400 on those. Got prescription lenses in them as well. So that was all included in the price, but I was able to claim it back on my health fund. So I got money back on that. So I only spent like 200 bucks. Whereas these, on the other hand, I can't claim them back because they were purchased through the Chanel store. So they don't have an item code for a, to be a health fund item. That's how they look. They've got like diamantes on the side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they're good. I love oversized sunglasses. So that's how they look. What do you reckon? I can't see, I'm, I'm, I don't have my glasses in in general, like I don't have my contacts in, so I'm pretty blind right now. It's all blurry in that viewfinder over there. But yeah, they do look pretty cool. But I definitely need to get prescription lenses in because I don't wear contacts. I find them annoying. I find them, yeah, pretty cumbersome to also use, like put them on. Like I feel like it takes like a good five minutes to put contact lenses in and I've got kids, so I'm always time poor. So those are my Chanel sunglasses. I don't know how long this video is. There is some other stuff I wanted to kind of say. I don't know if I'm gonna say where I'm relocating to. I mean, maybe the state will eventually come up, but in terms of city, I don't know if I'll actually say. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. One being, you know, um, I kind of want to like, if I can, you know, be a bit more private in terms of that sort of stuff. And the other thing is that I recently had someone comment on my Instagram that it was a, like, they pretty much put on my Instagram the name of a suburb and they put it as like a hashtag as like an insult, right? So that was a little bit close to home, you know, and they were obviously trying to intimidate me, um, you know, emit those stalker vibes by saying that they had an idea where I live. Um, they weren't, they weren't right in the suburb that they said. Um, they were, two, like I said, two suburbs away, but it's still, it was still pretty close to home, you know? So I kind of was a bit like, mm, this person's a bit crazy. That's a bit weird why would you go to the effort to try and find the actual the actual suburb that someone lives like why but that kind of was a bit of an eye-opener to me to go well if i can kind of like you know be a bit more private in that regards um then perhaps i should for the sake of my children most importantly always my children first i always you know thinking about them so i also even toyed around like if i can be completely and totally and utterly honest after that stuff happened with hermes and I put up my video and, you know, spoke about how I, you know, my thoughts on it and everything. Obviously, looking back, I wish I could have done it differently, but it was my truth at the time. And there is a lot of, there's a lot in that video as well, even though I had done things wrong. There are so many things that needed to be highlighted that that brand does, you know, in terms of um, exclusion. No, I'm not even going to say the word brand, actually. That's the wrong thing to say because I don't feel like this is 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 always going to be global, but I feel like it was specifically to that store. Even if they had chosen not to sell to me for whatever reasons, it was why couldn't they have a duty of disclosure disclosure to just say that they couldn't sell that what I was asking for, um, and it wasn't going to happen? Like why not just tell me that? Like how hard could it be? I can't sue them in Australia. It's not like the US. We can't just sue people because they, you know, kicked our cat, whatever. You can't just sue people for anything in Australia. It's not how it works. We're, we're you know, not a sue nation. So, um, like, why couldn't Hermes have just say, said to me, look, we can't sell you a bag. We're not able to sell you one. I'm sorry. Um, you know, but we can sell you, you know, uh, you know, like, why don't they just say that to me? You know, so whatever. It is what it is. Okay. But, after that kind of happened, like after I did my video, I obviously received like criticism and support, both, both sides of the spectrum, which I expected. Of course I expected that. But it also opened my eyes to make me think about would I want to continue doing YouTube with the potential, um, like w with the potential risks that come with it, where you get those kind of stalker vibes. Like I was just saying, people that literally 
take it to a whole extreme and try to find out where you live for because they don't like you like come on man like seriously why you know and i experienced that not only did i have that recently i had that before also people try to publish where i live you know try to find out about my kids and stuff like that you know things about like my personal life that i feel like is like dude you're just you're overstepping here you're going too far like this is not right this is not not cool and i considered quitting youtube i considered going you know what i don't want to fucking do this i don't want to do it anymore um and it was not because i was letting them get to me but it was because i was concerned if I continue to do it and I continue to grow on YouTube and on social media, could, would I be more subject to that kind of crap, you know, and would that put my family at risk? So it is still something that is in the back of my mind. I still consider sometimes walking away completely and just being like, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy my luxury things in private like I used to do before I started doing social media. I have thought about it. I'm still hanging around. I'm still here for now. Um, I'm not conclusive either way. I'm leaning towards, I, I still lean towards staying because I enjoy doing this. Like I wouldn't be filming like a bloody 40 minute video if I didn't enjoy sitting down and chatting and feeling like I'm engaging with you guys and having a chit chat, you know, like I wouldn't sit down and do that if I didn't actually enjoy it. Like why would I put myself through that kind of torture? You think, well, I really enjoy doing it, you know, you know, I'm sharing my passion and my hobby and I'm getting to mingle with other people that feel the same way and enjoy the same, like enjoy these same things as well. So yeah, I kind of want to stay for that reason because it's fun and I enjoy it, you know, and it's never to gloat. It's never gloating. It's always just sharing stuff and hoping that whoever is watching also enjoys in the sharing process and enjoys having a chat about it, you know, and seeing what's new and all that sort of stuff. Like, I just hope that whoever is watching actually also appreciates fashion and luxury as well. But the fact of it is that there isn't always those people watching. Sometimes you get a, an amount of people that literally are just watching um, you know, to, to, you know, criticize. And the unfortunate aspect with that is that the people that, you know, maybe watch for the wrong reasons, you know, or people that, you know, maybe like luxury and fashion, but they just don't like, don't, don't like me. You know, there are those people that are clearly still watching it, you know, and I just have concerns that the ones that take it too far, you know, um, could put potentially like, you know, my kids in danger or in harm's way or anything like that. You know, when they publish information by doing a good old deep dive in the internet, you know, and trying to find shit out. So I do have concerns and that's, you know, the reason why I don't know if I'll post my location, like where I've moved to, like the city or anything like that. Um, and also why I toyed with the idea of completely quitting social media. That's just my thinking right now. Time will tell, but, um, that is it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.